Kodak film for the times of your life. One of the oldest and first, if not the first, camera companies is Kodak. In its prime, it was looked at like how we look at Canon and Nikon. But with the turn of the 21st century, things were not really going well for Kodak. So let's see where exactly things went wrong. During the late 1800s, photography was slowly becoming more and more of a thing that people would do. During this time, film was not used, instead it was wet plates. As the name suggests, they were slimy and not convenient for photographers. In 1878, George Eastman would demonstrate the dry plates, which, as the name suggests, fixed this issue. A year later, he created a machine enabling him to mass-produce the plates, and in 1885, the commonly used standard for making photos, known as film, was introduced. It wouldn't be until 1888 that the name Kodak was being used as the company's name. So is there a meaning behind the word Kodak? Uh, no. There actually isn't. It turns out George said he just came up with it. Film would go on to the market the next year in 1889 and would contribute to helping Thomas Edison make his 1891 camera. But Kodak would truly revolutionize the photography industry with the introduction of the first affordable camera called the Brownie. It costed $1, which in today's money is $26.57. Two years later, Kodak introduced the developing machine, which made it easier for people to make their own images without needing a darkroom. 16mm film became the standard in 1923, and color would be added five years later, with Kodak Color Film. And in 1932, George would pass away. In 1935, Kodak Chrome Film became a massive success amongst customers, and in 1955, Disneyland would open. Now what does Disneyland have to do with Kodak? Well, the company was a sponsor for Disney for many, many years. In 1962, this is when Kodak really began to boom. They surpassed 75,000 employees and $1 billion. Also this year, John Glenn became the first astronaut to orbit the Earth, and it was all filmed on a Kodak camera. In 1965, the popular Super 8 format was created, and another big moment of course for Kodak in its many lists of space sponsorships was when a Kodak camera was used to film Neil Armstrong stepping onto the moon in 1969, and in fact that won an Emmy for its fast color television processing. In 1971, Disney World opened, and over the years, Disney's relationship with Kodak would grow even more. In between the 2000s and before that, you'll see these kiosks where you can take photos with them. They've been replaced now with PhotoPass, but yeah, they were all basically there just to say, look at how good Kodak's cameras are. In 1975 though, this was a very big course of change for Kodak. This is where Kodak really, really messed up. So in 1975, Kodak created the world's first digital camera, and it was a lot bigger than you'd expect a digital camera to be. It was around the size of, I would guess, a GameCube. It could only take 0.1 megapixel photos. It was not commercially available, and Kodak scrapped the idea in the fear that it would damage its film business, and ironically that happened later on, but we'll get to that. Kodak turned 100 in 1980 and would announce its surpassing of $10 billion in 1981. When Epcot opened back in 1982, Kodak was a sponsor for one of the pavilions. This of course was the famous ride known as Imagination, and would work with the Disney parks for a little while. In 1984, Kodak entered video and started making VHS tapes. As the rise of competitors and digital cameras came, Kodak would still focus on film throughout the 80s and mid-90s, but Kodak would finally enter the digital camera era with the DC-20. So as we know in the 90s, Apple was uh, not the same Apple that we know today, or before the 90s. The CEO at the time wanted to try out different markets, like as we know the video game industry and whatever industry this is, and they were all failing miserably, and another one that Apple was trying was the digital camera industry, and they wanted Kodak's help, so they worked together and made the Quick Take 100 in 1994. It had the ability to store a whopping 8 photos at a resolution of 6 640 x 480 Long story short, this camera series was a huge fail, and it was killed in 97 when Steve Jobs returned to Apple and killed a bunch of projects. In the 2000s, digital cameras became even more and more common, costing around $100 at the time. In 2003, for the first time, digital would surpass film. 35mm camera's value dropped, and Kodak announced its closure of selling developed photos. Their share of the industry would drop from 27% in 19. 
1999 to 15% in 2003. This was also the beginning of the short-lived, tourist-loved, especially in Florida, disposable camera era. You know, those cameras that you could pick up at Walmart for like 10 bucks and then develop them at Walmart or whatever. Kodak's next mission was to understand what consumers wanted. So they began doing all sorts of tests and found out that certain groups of individuals were having a tough time transitioning into digital. I know it seems extremely hard to understand because nowadays we're so used to digital technology, but during this transitional decade for certain customers, it was a little bit tough. And it turns out, whatever Kodak did with their digital cameras, it was a huge success because they would become the number one for digital cameras in 2005, with revenue up to $5.7 billion. The only problem though is that Kodak was losing $60 on every camera they sold, and their cameras were not really as cheap as their competitors. Kodak would drop very quickly in two years to fourth place and they only held 9.6%. In 2010, Kodak would end their contract with Disney to sponsor Journey into Imagination. Also, with the popularity of cell phone cameras, this would shrink Kodak and point-and-shoot cameras as a whole. Kodak was forced to remove over 27,000 jobs and shut down its film factory division. They began focusing more into digital aspects of cameras, and Kodak tried out printers, with theirs being more money but the ink was a lot cheaper. As Kodak's debt began rising, they started selling off patents to other big companies, but in 2012 Kodak filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, having over $915 million in debt. This would also be the year that they would cut ties with Disney for the most part. The next year though, Kodak escaped bankruptcy. They announced plans to release a phone called the Ektra in 2014, and in 2015 they restructured the company and focused on five divisions, consumer and film, which this division actually worked recently on filming Dunkirk. The other industries included software and solutions, print systems, Interjet ink systems, and micro 3D printing, and did something in 2016 that would have sounded absolutely insane back 10 years ago, but now it makes a lot of sense. If you if you haven't noticed, there's a very odd but amazing trend that I like that millennials and of course older generations are showing signs that they miss the past. I see people buying vinyls and Fujifilm Instamix cameras and Super 8 cameras again. This led to Kodak introducing a Super 8 camera. The only problem though is that this camera could be upwards of $2,500 to $3,000. I'm guessing that that's because this is supposed to be like a professional Super 8 camera, but I do wish that there was more of a a consumer affordable camera. They also eventually released the Ektra phone and announced plans to release tablets in Europe. But recently this year, with the craze of cryptocurrency, Kodak entered that business. Their currency was called Kodak Coin. But what exactly is it? Well, this odd idea is a photographer's cryptocurrency. This was a currency that was going to be used by photographers to pay and allow licenses for photos. It was called Kodak One. Yeah, as of now, it seems like Kodak's strong field is gonna be with the Super 8 cameras. I'm not sure why they're doing phones and tablets. I think that that market is way too big. And I've heard some pretty good things about their printers and that industry is doing good for them. They also have their own Insta printer camera. So that was another wise move for them to do. Although the photos don't really seem like the new Polaroid camera or Fujifilm's aesthetic where it has that like white edge. It's just the photo itself that's printed. Now about the cryptocurrency, I saw that their stock did jump a little, and now I don't know much about what's going on with that. But the main problem that Kodak had was that they were a little bit too late on the ball. While other competitors were taking an advantage of the digital era, Kodak was a little too slow, and it seems like this is a story that just happens again and again and again. Mostly I can think of Blockbuster when I think of this scenario. Sometimes in life you just have to go with the flow, and don't swim away from the current. 